On September 10th, 2024, SpaceX launched the Polaris Dawn mission from the Kennedy Space Center. This groundbreaking mission, financed by billionaire entrepreneur Jared Isaacman, marked a major milestone in commercial space travel. Alongside Scott Petit, Sarah Gillis, and Anna Menon, Isaacman embarked on a mission that flew higher than any human spaceflight since 1972, reaching a record altitude of 870 miles, 1,400 kilometers, above Earth's surface, surpassing even the International Space Station by more than three times its typical orbit. But this wasn't just any space trip. Polaris Dawn set out to accomplish several key objectives, including testing the brand new SpaceX-designed extravehicular activity, EVA spacesuits, performing a record-breaking commercial spacewalk, and conducting crucial in-space research that will advance our understanding of space radiation and the effects of long-term spaceflight on the human body. The crew spent five days in orbit, gathering invaluable data. Now, here's where things get really interesting. On September 12th, Jared Isaacman and Sarah Gillis became the first private astronauts to step outside their capsule in what is being hailed as the first ever commercial spacewalk. Equipped with cutting-edge EVA suits, they floated nearly 700 kilometers above Earth. Just imagine, only government-trained astronauts had done this before. And now we have civilians venturing into the vacuum of space, and the risks? Immense. Their Crew Dragon capsule lacks an airlock, meaning the entire cabin had to be depressurized, putting all four astronauts at risk. The crew had to undergo a series of preparatory steps to avoid the infamous bends or decompression sickness, an affliction more commonly associated with deep sea divers. This mission pushed boundaries by flying through the Van Allen radiation belts, exposing the crew to significantly higher levels of radiation than astronauts typically experience on the International Space Station. This not only tested the resilience of the EVA suits, but also provided valuable data for future missions, particularly those aiming for the Moon and Mars. What makes this mission even more unique? The cultural and scientific experiments on board. Sarah Gillis, a talented violinist, performed Ray's theme from Star Wars during the mission, broadcasting it back to Earth via SpaceX's Starlink laser-based communication system, testing the future of space-based internet connectivity. Meanwhile, the team conducted over 40 scientific experiments, from studying the effects of microgravity on blood flow to monitoring the impact of space missions on human ocular health. This mission was as much about advancing human knowledge as it was about technological innovation. And where does this all lead? Polaris Dawn is just the first step in a much larger vision of human exploration beyond Earth. As SpaceX founder Elon Musk dreams of building a city on Mars, Isaacman's Polaris program is designed to test the limits of human spaceflight and prepare for the development of scalable spacesuits for long-duration missions. The experiments conducted during this mission, including the EVA suit trials and laser communication technology, could lay the groundwork for future missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Finally, on September 15th, 2024, after five intense days in orbit, the Crew Dragon capsule splashed down off the coast of Florida in the Gulf of Mexico. The crew emerged from their capsule, jubilant, after completing one of the most ambitious private space missions to date. Polaris Dawn wasn't just a technological success, it was a monumental leap forward for the commercial space industry. But this is only the beginning. The Polaris program has two more missions lined up and the third one might just involve a trip to the Hubble Space Telescope, or even the first manned flight of SpaceX's Starship, which is designed to take humans to Mars. So, the question remains, will commercial spaceflight become as routine as flying across the country? With missions like Polaris Dawn, we are one step closer to a future where space is accessible to all. But one thing is for sure, there is still so much left to explore and discover. What do you think? Is space tourism just a billionaire's game? Or are we on the cusp of a new space age? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more exciting space news.